this is then going to set the stage to show the context of what features we have and what features that will come in the future. So the whole purpose of the solution is to communicate BIM in a way that everyone understands. The idea is that when you're working on site, that's when you start to see how it's actually going to get built and you realize uh, challenges and problems and you can discuss them. But at that point, it's too late. So you end up having to do costly rework with blown budgets and delays, uh, or you have to live with a bad solution for 30 years. So that's what we try to uh, solve. Uh, so uh, as an example, this is an infrastructure project that's going on in uh, Norway. It's uh, six train stations uh, with under, uh, underground rail underneath the, um, the capital. So in there, they use all the tools that you're familiar with. The, the project team is building out the BIM. The challenge there, as we see in all the projects, is that they have an extended team that is oftentimes 10 times as large as the BIM team, and they need to make some decisions, and this is not the optimal way to do that. So we try to make it as easy as possible for the project team on the left to make the BIM available, then diving into it and standing on the floor uh, where you can meet and have a virtual tour before you start building, and it's still cost-effective to do the changes. Then we work with our customers to establish these kind of iterative workflows throughout the project. So you have your BIM consultants working on the BIM and they publish it. It could be daily, weekly, every two weeks. And they have then access to the latest models and can understand it and give feedback. By setting this up, you have uh, this kind of feedback loop established a lot earlier in the project than you would have done in traditional workflows. And then um, mm, that can mean savings on a project. Mm -hmm. Around 12% of the total budget of a project is spent on the rework, and half of it can be resolved using clearer communication during the planning stages. So it's basically the 6% of the budget that we are addressing. For a lot of our customers, it's their margin. So that's where they want to focus. VR, VRX is primarily a VR solution, at least originally, but we see that at least 40% of our users use it as a collaborative real-time BIM viewer and not just using VR. There are all the functionality available in regular screens, not only on VR. We also now support cave solutions that we see are coming back. It used to be something in the 90s, 2000s, but now it seems to be coming back with some uh, upgrades which is interesting. So I'll... you can see this is just a video example of that session. And then we have the integrations. In this case, it's an integration with um, Oracle Aconex. Um, and up your flashes that you have stored in Aconex, so you can automatically get to the right places in the model without having to look for them and then discuss those issues. And any decision that you make by using comments. So you've got three people there virtually from different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. When they go to do the site tour, are they seeing it before it happens? That they notice this particular pipe is in the wrong place and it's going to impede traffic uh, for the rest of the project. Are they seeing it before it happens or is this um, discovery? That's a good question. At the moment, the current state of VR is that those people on the left side, they have the equipment and they bring these people on the right side in to have a virtual uh, inspection. They always, almost always knows that this is a problem area, basically doing a validation of a proposed solution. But what we are seeing in those companies and projects that are more advanced in use of VR, then it's a more of a visual inspection. The people on the right side here have access to VR headset and they can just turn it on anytime and look around. Oh, I see something here. I need to ask someone about that. That's tremendous because it just tells me that on the left, in some companies, it is exclusively their purview and they're communicating to the right side about the problem. But if the right side is more sophisticated, they would then be able to go on the site and pick up these problems themselves. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the trend we're seeing. The more that they start to realize that that's possible, the more they want to do that. 
the right side. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had one uh, project manager that is our customer. He was able to convince his clients to use uh, VR. He said that it's an easy pitch to the building owner. He tells them, when we're making this project, do you want to use virtual reality so you can see what you're getting along the way? Or do you want a surprise when I hand you the keys at the end? <laughs> they are basically buying the license and then they're selling it as a service to their customers. How often does it refresh? So let's say there's a BIM manager or a project manager that says that we have a delivery on Fridays. And then typically they do a clash detection and then they're ready for reviews on Mondays. So then they just click the refresh on Fridays uh, oh. at five o'clock. Uh, some people just do it every day. That's up to the project, basically. And typically, who are the major roles once you onboard from Vrex become involved it, it sounds like a no-brainer to say the BIM department but if if they don't have a BIM team who are those roles project managers yes so I would say the project managers are the ones with the biggest pains that we can solve because they are in charge of making sure that everyone across the experts to stakeholders to decision makers are informed and make sound decisions so that's our biggest pain points relief but we also see that a lot of engineers or consultants are annoyed with the delays and the lack of understanding that they get for their work. So they have to take a week to evaluate something that should just be, a, hey, can you just look at this and tell me so I can get on with my work to basically avoid crunches towards the end of the project. They are also more technically sophisticated so they can quickly get up and running with VR. So I would say that they are actually the ones that are buying the most VR at the moment but the biggest value proposition is for the product managers and the building owners. This is...